There we go. I pressed the button. Yeah. So um, when we were trying to get our lineup for the summer, we wanted to make sure we got some really hard hitters because obviously I think if you're coming on Wednesday at 8.30 a.m. to collaborate, we wanted to make sure we we're giving you, um, you know, just top notch content. So we reached out to Jessica knowing she's in the trenches every day with uh, what, 45 to 50 agents, Jessica, mm -hmm. and you guys are on track yep. for a thousand transactions this year. Um, and I have seen it, you know, um, just your mentorship, um, and just, you know, being able to tactfully get into conversations with agents and kind of coach them through, um, objection handling and, um, navigating, um, you know, just some of those, those regular hits that we get from, um, not just clients, but potentially other agents and things like that. So we just wanted to give you a platform to come share your immense amount of knowledge. Um, so I'll turn it over to you and let you drive the ship. I'm going to just give you sharing capabilities if you need anything. But you don't actually need to share. I, you know what? It, I it's all it's, about scripts. It's about words. Like, I know. I that's even... what we talked about. So <laughs> I figured you were coming ready to rock and roll and talk. Guys, um, there are about 35, 40 of us on this call. Uh, make sure that you plug in. If Jessica asks a question, um, Alice and I don't need to answer it together and we will be very obnoxious. So yeah. um, you answer the questions. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And stay muted um, just to kind of keep it rolling and then unmute yourself if you need to talk or raise your hand and throw it in the chat box and let's rock and roll. Take it away, Jessica. Yes, I love it. Well, good morning, everybody. And um, Anna and Allison, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Um, and I have some good news and some bad news for those of you that are here. Some of you know me, so you know I already have what I think is a fantastic sense of humor. Um, those that don't know you, guess what? I think I'm really funny. So if I laugh at a joke that I tell, then that's okay because my humor is my humor. Um, so today I'm just going to kind of go through what I think are some of the secrets behind scripts. And the good news is I hope that you take away at least one nugget from today. Um, for the estate. If you're hoping yes. to so get. That's what he's uh, zooming in on today. He has a meeting with them. At Oh, okay. Um, today, if you're hoping to get a magical script that's going to help you land a deal, you may want a script that's going to help you recruit a new agent. You may want a script to ask for a review, referral, etc. cetera. Um, well, I'm here to tell you that there is no actual magical script. If there was, I would have created it, paid for it, and blasted it out to the entire world. But there is magic in the scripts, in my opinion. Um, so for those of you that don't know me, I'll tell you just a little bit about me and my story and just who I am as a person. Um, I'm a North Carolina native. I was born in Greenville, North Carolina and moved to Wilmington. Um, I grew up at the beach. I am now not at the beach and happy to not be there. Um, I was raised by a single mom who worked tirelessly to provide for her me and then later on my younger brother. She worked really long hours um, and she was always trying to find that balance between work and parenting and the stress along with that. And I would say that I was not always the greatest with helping with stress. I was a little bit of a smart aleck kid and I can't tell you how many times I was told, it's not what you said, Jessica Lee, it's how you said it. And that has stuck with me throughout my life. And while it was a negative in one aspect, it has led to something positive down the road. Um, so before I got into real estate, I had a job at a cosmetics company. I started selling lipstick and skincare. I had to build a book of business. And whenever gift time rolled out, if any of you ladies or gentlemen have ever been with Clinique or Estee Lauder and know all the things, you are selling lipsticks to somebody in an aisle and working through that. Um, so I had to sell things to people I didn't know. I had to call people that I had never met and I had to close sales in order to get a paycheck. Guess what? It was hard and I wasn't really good at it right away. Um, I didn't know the product. I didn't know the best words to use. And I just about gave up because working on straight commission for a paycheck is really hard, but I didn't, I worked hard because I had chosen that path and I was just gonna do the things that I needed to do. Um, worked there for five years, became a business manager for multiple accounts. And I found out that with practice, I was in fact good with people and at sales. I learned the four things that I needed to do. 
find the client's concern, discover the solution, explain the benefits, close the sale. I learned that that was my formula to pretty much make it all happen. Then I relocated to Raleigh. And in Raleigh, it was because I had my next big position. I was gonna take over as the executive account manager for the entire area and was super excited. And then all of a sudden that position was eliminated. And I said, okay, what's next? What am I gonna do? Because my whole life has been building up to this. Well, I had just purchased my first home a couple months before and absolutely loved the process. The agent was great everything about it. I was like, if I could sell lipstick, like, wouldn't it be really cool if I could sell houses? Um, so I thought long and hard and I didn't want my future to depend on a person or a company or anything like that. I was going to take it into my own hands. So I got my license and I quit my job. I saved up just enough money for six months. Every book and every person I talked to said, save enough for six months. So I calculated it out and it was six months to the penny of what I had saved. So I knew I was running out of money here if I made no paycheck. Um, but I joined a team and I decided I was gonna do it. Again, I didn't know what I was doing. I was handed some scripts and said, memorize this and hit the database, hit the phones. Um, and those first two weeks were terrifying because I had words on a page, but I didn't know about real estate. I didn't know the process. I had bought a house, but it was only my limited perception of things. Um, people were hanging up on me. They were yelling at me and it sucked. Um, so I asked for feedback. I said, something's not right here. What do I do? I knew I had the tools. Say X to get the appointment. Once you get the appointment, say Y to get the agreement. But it just, it wasn't working. Um, because I got in my own head and I forgot the one thing that I know how to do, which is talk to people and treat people like they're a person and go back to what do they need? What's your problem? What's my solution? How do we move forward together? Forward together. So, so, um, so I stopped focusing on the words on the page. I had it memorized. I knew the flow and I started thinking about things differently. Just have the conversations follow the flow of the person I was talking to. And lo and behold, I had success again. Um, I went from a brand new agent to the business, had no experience to the top producer on that team within a year. I ultimately took over the productivity coach, interviewing, onboarding, all while selling the most on the team. All of that led me to today, where I lead a team of about 45 to 50 agents, where I get to skill up their business every day and we are on pace, actually we're ahead of pace to close a thousand homes. So I tell all you that not to brag, but just to kind of give you an idea of who I am and what are the things that I've done in the past. Um, so the first thing I would like to go over is this little simple piece is I want you to think of, and I don't have a slideshow, so you just have to listen to me because that's kind of the point of all of this, is think of the question, hey, how are you doing? Those five words are going to be interpreted completely different depending on how you use them. So the first way I'm going to do it, I know some of you are driving, so you won't be able to see the facial expressions, but hopefully you can hear some tonality pieces as we kind of go through is, hey, how are you doing? I asked it as a question, but it was so quick and so brief that it felt more like a fleeting interaction versus a greeting. Now, if I take that same sentence and I say, hey, how are you doing? emphasis is now on the hey, on the greeting. You're feeling a little bit warmer, a little bit more connection. And then the same question, hey, how are you doing? The emphasis now goes on to the you and you feel a little bit more connected and there's a little bit more of that concern tone with it. So that same sentence or question, the words are all the same. That's the script. The script is, hey, how are you doing? But how you deliver it, the nonverbal cues, the tonality, where the emphasis falls, all of that is going to change how the receiver, which is you guys in this instance on Zoom, are going to interpret what I'm trying to actually say and how you're going to receive the message. So studies have shown that the way that we interpret language and the meaning behind something, only 7% of that is the actual words that someone uses. 
38% is going to be your verbal or your tonality piece to it, your inflections, the up and down, and then 55% is body language. So this means, and I'm sure all of us have done it, when you've sent a text or an email that's only words, the person on the receiving end has lost 93% of the cues that they need to attach meaning to that. So if you've ever sent a text that was a little bit shorter, like K, hey, for instance, and then you immediately felt like you needed to follow it up with another text or a phone call to say, hey, I wasn't being short. I was, you know, I was, I was just busy, but you know what I mean? So it's not, you know, it's not a big deal. Don't be upset with it. Um, that's because we've lost a lot of the context. So there's so much more than just the words on the page. So I've broken down what I think are the four main things to focus on when it comes to scripts. Um, to help bring them to life, increase connection with clients, and then see your conversion skyrocket. So I'm going to end up talking for a little while, but then I'm going to open it up and ask you guys for some interaction with some stuff. Um, the first thing with scripts, in my opinion, and just communication in general with clients is going to be understanding the emotional intelligence as it pertains to real estate. So emotional intelligence or reading the room, so to speak, is a pivotal role in understanding how it influences the other person's decision. It's comprised of a couple of parts, but mostly it is perceiving emotions, managing those emotions effectively, and then leveraging those emotions to build rapport and trust. And I'm sure all of us think that, okay, we need to be empathetic with our clients. And while we do, there's three stages of empathy. We almost all live in the first stage. So stage one is sharing the emotion with somebody else. I'm feeling your feelings. I'm sharing your pain. I'm putting myself in your shoes. Living in phase one is often where we find ourselves. We are going to, when somebody's having a bad day, oh, you know, I feel bad. And then you start having a bad day. We live in that phase one so often that we don't ever go into that second piece. The second piece is understanding that there's a boundary between us and the other person. My experience is not their experience and their experience is, is not mine. I work on buying and selling houses every day. It's not probably as exciting to me to walk into a house because I've done it 10,000 times. But if you're a client and you're brand new and this is your first home and you're walking in, there's a whole lot of emotions. So there's a boundary. What you're feeling is not what I'm feeling, but I'm excited to be there for you. And then the last piece that is the key to all of this is regulating your response to the client that you're in front of based on those first two pieces sharing that emotion with them, but then also that separation. So the first thing when it comes to scripts and what most of them are built to do is help with conversion. However, something comes before conversion. It's building that rapport and that trust. So genuine connection is the piece that all humans crave. So building rapport requires authenticity and a genuine interest in your clients as people and their goals. Showing that you care about their goals and their concerns, that's what fosters trust and strengthens the client-agent relationship. If they don't like you or feel as though you don't know what they want, why in the world would they want to work with you? One trick I have always used is within five minutes of meeting someone new, my goal is to either make you smile or make you laugh. I'm bringing down your guard. My goal is for us to really build that rapport and that connection right away. Now. Not everybody is rainbows, sunshines, unicorns, kitty cats, all of that. So I need to adjust how I build that rapport with different people. So right after I look at, okay, I'm going to be really genuine to myself, it's uncovering the priorities of that client. So really effective questioning techniques that are open-ended, not yes or no, that's going to help uncover what matters most to the clients. It can be location, amenities investment potential, lifestyle preferences, but by empathizing with the clients and uncovering what it is that they're looking for, I can get to their underlying motivations and concerns. And that understanding is going to allow me to tailor my entire approach to what they specifically need. So tailoring that approach is based off the individual's clients, goals, preferences. It's going to demonstrate the commitment to them for their unique needs so that it's not just up in the air. Everybody gets treated the same. Yes, to some extent, 
But if your priority is investment portfolios, we're going to be looking at something probably a little bit different than someone who's looking to downsize and it be a forever home. So customizing everything that I do to that client is going to build that relationship. So if you've ever had a conversation, let's say a difficult one, we all have family members or friends that have a different personality than us. If they've ever been disengaged and we're continuing to talk at someone, we've lost that connection piece. I'm not customizing anything that I'm saying to someone who's sitting there completely disengaged. And I think it happens more often than we realize with clients because we're so focused on this is what I say next. This is the next piece that I have to do rather than taking a minute and understanding what is their language and can I adjust in that moment to make sure that I'm speaking how they want to be spoken to. We always say the golden rule is people want to be treated, treat people how you want to be treated. Well, the platinum rule is treat them how they want to be treated. Think of the same thing when it comes to scripts. The other piece is establishing credibility and managing expectations and emotions. This is a big one. So whether you're a new agent, a team leader, a seasoned agent, we have to demonstrate our expertise and almost edify ourselves with clients based on the knowledge in the market, past successes, and industry insights. That's what helps build the credibility and instills the confidence in your clients and also within yourself. If you're not confident in who you are, even if you're a brand new agent, be confident in the fact that if you don't know the answer, you'll be willing to figure it out. So transparency and communication about the market and the realities and the potential challenges sets a really realistic expectation and that builds the trust. If you were in the market and worked with any buyers end of really 2021 as a whole to 2022, the expectation you were setting with buyers is, hey, this is what it's going to take to win a home in the market. We have a lot of demand for it. We're going high above purchase price. I want to make sure that we're really clear about what this looks like and are you ready to be in the market and do what it takes to win a home. On the flip side of that, when the market softens, having those expectations with the sellers. I just want to let you know this is exactly what we're experiencing right now. It's totally normal. I want to set the right expectations. We just talked at the beginning of this call of, hey, what's everybody seeing in the market? Is it softening? All of those. The emotional management after you've set those expectations, that's going to be critical when it comes to negotiation and just client interactions. And if you can navigate the emotions of both yours and your clients and create that separation, that's going to lead to more productive discussions and overall better outcomes. So if you can't regulate your emotions, if we're a little, oh, I don't know what's going on, how in the world can we possibly be the smooth, easygoing agent that takes the stress off of them? So the third piece to this is effective communication strategies, is what I like to say. So you have your active listening and nonverbal cues. So listening actively and picking up on those nonverbal cues for body language, their tone of voice, that helps you understand them at a deeper level. It's going to demonstrate your attentiveness and enhance that mutual understanding. Recently, I had some agents that we were talking about open houses, and we're hosting these open houses, but we can't get names and numbers. We're not getting conversion. How is it that we're going to actually do this. Like, what am I doing wrong? I'm saying the things, I'm doing the things, what's what's going on? I said, okay, walk me through exactly what that looks like for you. We're at the open house, tell me what we're doing. And in that moment, we had this, this learning piece, and I'm not sure if any of them are on today, but it was, okay, how we're standing in the moment. We're putting our hands in our pockets and we're right by the door. Our shoulders are square. We're putting on this wall almost that's nonverbal that we're telling people, hey, what what would you like to see? We're saying the right things, but our body language says, I'm, I'm coming at you versus being a little bit more open, welcoming, placing your foot a little bit back, smiling, talking with your hands, never crossing your hands over your arms or sticking it in your pocket. But what does that feel like? Like how open, what are we telling them without our words? And so- we tried a couple things and lo and behold, one of the agents came back to me on Monday. This is on a Friday and said, oh my God, it worked. I changed how I stood and people actually talked to me. 
and we got more information and we just had a great conversation. I never thought I've been hosting these open houses. I didn't think about how I was standing with that being something that could be getting in my way. And that's a piece with scripting. You can say all the right words, but if you're not delivering it the right way, whether it be verbal or nonverbal, we're hitting a miss. When's the last week we've seen each other. And um, they've been little best friends. Sharing stories is but the next piece that was- deeply resonates with people. So when working with clients, crafting narratives that highlight the benefits and the emotional appeal of a property or a deal That's going to be what captivates the clients and help them to visualize themselves in that transaction, whether it be buy side or list side. People don't act based on facts. They they act based on emotions and how you make them feel and what they think is coming. If you don't have your own stories, borrow them from someone. If you're a brand new agent, you don't have anything, call me. I will give you all stories in the world that you can borrow and utilize with your clients. And hey, I've seen this happen, blah, 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 blah. But letting people feel like they're not alone and creating a story around that is going to be what helps more than anything to get them from point A to point B. And then you have persuasive language and framing. So the way that you frame something is going to influence 100% how it's perceived. I got on this morning and I said, okay, I'm going to talk at you a lot. You might not like the things that I say. You might think that there's not a good script or whatever the case is. Um, But I hope that you stay on. We probably would have lost quite a few people. But if I come in and I'm like, hey, so I don't have this magic script, but here are the things that go into it that make it magic. So let's get into that and see. When you use positive language and you frame the features as benefits, that's what makes it more appealing and makes you more persuasive. There is something that's called high value versus low value. You want to be professional. You want to lead. You want to be persuasive. I don't need to qualify to the lead why I'm the best person for you. I want to qualify you to see why you're the best client I should take on. When I have that mindset and I know my value, I'm able to persuade things and frame things exactly how I want. I am sure all of you have heard of DISC. One of us has probably taken a personality assessment. DISC is the most popular, so that's the one that I'm using. Um, I have heard so many people say, well, they're a high D, so I showed up as a high D and they needed a decision maker. So I told them we needed to do this because I wanted to earn their respect and show my authority. Okay, that's great. You just came at somebody. So DISC and personality things are not how you show up every single day. It's how someone's showing up in that moment. So while somebody may be a driver, they may be somebody they want to move really quickly, they want to make decisions in their day-to-day life, it could be something that when it's unknown in a real estate transaction, don't assume, hey, just give them the cliff notes. Ask what are the things that they need. And with that, you have the closing techniques. So using effective closing techniques, um, summarizing the benefits, handling the objections confidently. And here's the piece that I will tell you, you do not have to have all the right answers. It is far better to say, I think I know the right solution, but let me just double check and get back to you. That will land better almost every time than you making something up and being wrong and your clients finding that out or just sounding like you're blowing smoke. Presenting the clear next steps, future pacing is huge. That's going to facilitate a transaction from interest to commitment. Because of the fact that you said blank, the next step is blank. Would it be unreasonable to fill in the blank? All of those closes, that's the natural ending of a conversation. If you miss the close and you don't ask for it, then why are we surprised if they don't sign? Or why are we surprised if they don't know what the next step is? Or then they have questions. So future pacing and closing that out is huge. And the last piece with this, which is probably the not so fun part, I know it's been riveting so far, um, is internalizing the actual script. None of the stuff that I've talked about before can be done unless you internalize it. And notice that I didn't say memorize the script. The definition of memorizing something is to learn something so that you will repeat it and remember it exactly. But when you memorize the script, all you know are the words. 
And if something goes a different way, how in the world are you going to adjust? Because all you know is they say X, I say Y. They say Z, I say W. Internalizing is completely different. So that's the process of understanding the meaning of the speech and being able to deliver that in a natural and engaging way. You can't internalize a script without memorizing it first. So you do have to actually memorize it. So memorize it. You're going to practice it. You're going to fail. You're going to try again. I am someone who I actually write the scripts out just like sentences. When you get in trouble for talking too much in school, that was me. So I'm going to write out my script. That's the fastest way for me to remember it. I record myself. I'm listening to it again. Do I know the exact words? Once you know what the words are, I always suggest taking that script and going 30,000 feet up. Here are the words in the moment. What is the flow of this? First, we say this. Like, what are the bullet points? Let's pull out the key pieces to that. Oftentimes when you're building rapport, it's going to look like LP mama or something like that. I always learned it as who, what, when, where, why, and how. Five W's plus an H. So if I know that's my intention, I need to get this information because all of that is about them. Then I close it with an appointment or I close it with a signature. I know the flow of it and the intention and the goal at the end. So am I trying to get them to sign? Are we trying to write an offer? Am I trying to get a referral, a review? Am I trying to get them to join me on my team? What is the intention and then the flow? When I know the flow, I can be genuine. I can make it my own. But I can only adjust on the fly if I know the basics of it and I know what my intention is. And then the in the moment audit. If I'm talking to someone, the piece that I like to keep in mind is if my intention is to, let's say, get the appointment, let's say we're on a cold call. When I'm speaking with someone is everything that I'm saying, bring me closer to or further away from that goal of getting the appointment. And if I find myself bunny trailing, okay, how do I, how do I respectfully get it back to the goal? So using that little piece every time that you're even in a conversation is going to be huge. Am I moving closer to or further away? But remember, sometimes you have to move further away to get closer. If I need to build rapport and talk to somebody about their life a little bit more, because that's what's going to make them feel good to win them over, then that's what I need to do. But that's actually getting me closer because I'm building that rapport with them. So no one wakes up the master of anything. And while it's true, you can be gifted at something. You're not a master right away. I am not a sports person. If anyone has seen me, I am not what you would call athletically gifted. But I do know this. And this is where you know that I'm not a sports person because my metaphors are going to be totally dated. Shaq didn't wake up great. Michael Jordan didn't wake up great. Everybody had to put in the practice and learn the little nuggets along the way and do it over and over and over and over again. And then they got good at it. So my challenge for anybody who's struggling with scripts is take a breakdown of it, practice it every day, get the honest feedback and internalize the words so that you know exactly what it is and read the room every time you're delivering it and learning how to read people and adjust in those moments. That's going to be what's key with scripts. It has less to do, as my mom always said, about what you say, but it's how you say it. So read the room because emotional intelligence will take you farther than you actually realize. Even if you don't know what to say, if you can read a room and communicate and connect with people, that's going to take you a lot further than somebody that knows the words and can't land it. Build rapport and trust really quickly with clients. People want to work with people that they like, know, and trust. If they don't like you, they don't want to work with you. Effectively communicate with somebody on their terms. Listen to what it is that they want. If I'm dangling a carrot and I say, hey, here's my carrot. Talked to Heather about this last night. If I'm dangling a carrot because this is what I think you want and you want a cheeseburger, you are never going to eat my carrot. But... I say, oh, you know what? They don't want to care. They want cheeseburger. Hey, you know what? I got a cheeseburger over here. We could immediately adjust in there. 
think of it, what's in it for them. And then the last piece is internalizing the scripts so that you can make it your own. Um, it is something that it's not easy, but it's simple. If you don't have a role play partner and you want to practice scripts and role play, I am always happy to do that. Um, sometimes I get the itch again to get out in the field and handle objections because I kind of like objections. It's kind of like a little, little high, little hit for me that I'm like, oh, give me your problems. Let me figure it out. Um, but it's something that I still practice that all the time. Any of the agents on the team, when they have something, I'm like, please come to me. Please let me get in the weeds with it. I absolutely love it. So um, I'd like to open it up to you guys. Any questions, comments, like what was a nugget or something that was different for you today? Um, or maybe something that you've already known, but you heard differently because I just talked for a long time. <laughs> can you hear me? Yep, I can hear someone. Okay, this is Amanda Jones. Um, so one of the nuggets that I've just taken from your awesome information you've just given us is the, to internalize the scripts, not to memorize them. Yes. I'm fairly new and still kind of going through the scripts and learning all the words, but to be able to put yourself in it and internalize it is just a, a much different perspective than, than I was going into it with initially. So thank you for that. Good. I'm glad. Well, and how I deliver something is going to be totally different to you. If you're not a goofball person that loves to be crazy and dance and do whatever, then you're never going to do it the exact same way that I do. So when you internalize it, you're going to make it your own, which is awesome. Jessica, I thought it was actually really cool. I do make it a point. I'm in, I've been in hospitality forever. So it's always a, you know, a goal to engage someone super, super fast, whether it's verbally or non-verbally so that and I've been a trainer. So like your 93%, your 7%, all that kind of stuff. Like I know all of that. I've never put a time limit on myself though. So the fact that you said five minutes, that was kind of neat just to hear you say, okay, I already know I can do it, but now I've got five minutes to get it done. And then you immediately went into your, the I guess four pillars, if that's what you want to call it, figure out what the problem is, solve the problem, explain the benefit. Like that's, it's just very cut and dry. And I thought that was pretty neat the way you just, just boom, 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 boom. And you're done. Oh, well, awesome. Well, people make the decision on whether or not they like you pretty much within 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. So if people dropped off in the first 30 seconds here, it's probably because they didn't like me and that's okay. I'm not for everybody. <laughs> but that five minutes, you have a little bit of recoil time to be like, all right, like, can we get back in this? Dear? Are we going to, are we going to jive or not? So that's awesome. One of the things that I took away, I don't even know if you meant for us to take away, but like a lot of us Southerners, I am a fast talker and I like to get as much information to whomever as quickly as possible. But what you did was, you know, you spoke with intentionality. You spoke like a little more slowly and you gave us a second to think about what you were saying and let that sink in. And I think that that's a lesson that everyone can benefit from. See, You did it non-verbally. Well, thanks, because I'm a very fast talker when I get excited <laughs> and I talk about scripts, but I just go, go, go. You did a great so I'm job. I'm glad I didn't just run <laughs> right through it because that was the that was the original intent. But that's awesome. Jessica, I'll say I'm so you all know me. I'm someone that really pushes back against scripts. I'm like, I want to do it this way and it's going to be this way. But I have been going out with some of the newer agents on my team. And then now I'm brushing up on the script, on the Mike Berry script and the listing presentation and doing it at the appointment so that they can hear it. And it's been really good for me because now I'm using the nuggets of like the car analogy and a lot of the things that I wouldn't normally use and talk about Amanda, like internalizing it and going, yeah, that's what the features and benefits you're shopping for a home right now. Right. So you're looking at the one down the street and comparing it to yours, which one's better for the price. Can I do this? So it's like changing the verbiage in the script to make it you. But now that I'm doing it with someone else and they're watching me, I'm like, Oh, I got to be on point here. So like if anybody has been in the, market for a while and has been an agent for a while, go on appointments with new people, get back into the script. And that's really helped me gain confidence, follow the script a little bit more and close people faster. I love that. You also know what's in your toolbox. It's a reminder of like, what's in there. Like, you're like, you know, the car analogy, you've known the car analogy forever. And you're like, wait, there was this. Let me pull this out. Okay, great. Yep. Here we go. You can use it when you need it. 
Um, I want to just say real quick, I'm driving. Hi, Jess. Hi. Um, you did amazing as usual. But what I wanted to say is, yeah, she, she, it's, it's hard for people sometimes that are um, not naturally creative when they think of responses to, you know, like they are the ones that actually love the scripts the most. And Jess is very natural and just conversational and she loves people. And I think what, what scripts do is they help you guys, you know, really, yes, internalize, but but become really efficient and become efficient in every little appointment. And I, I always say my first seven years, I didn't have scripts. I just, I was like, Jess, I just like to talk to people and be nice. And hopefully they like me. And the minute that I found scripts, it was like, oh my God, there's a process. I'm delivering something from A to B to C to D. I can get a result. I can get it faster. It's better for the client because I'm more in tune with where I'm going. When you know where you're going, you know what the end result is. And so I think like Ashley, she is my worst of, you know, oh, I hate scripts. Okay, Ashley, you're a natural. If Ashley actually adopted them, which I'm glad she is now, she'll be phenomenal. And so it takes those natural conversationalist people and it keeps them on track so they don't go, go off on tangents. And I, I went from an hour to uh, hour listing appointment down to a 45 minute list appointment. And sometimes I could get it to 35 minutes. And so if you're going on three listing appointments a day, because you're just selling homes at high volume, you don't have time to sit there for two hours and build rapport because you have shit to do. So I love the scripts because it really keeps you on point. Um, and I think you did a great job explaining it. So you know, I think that's a really big point that you don't realize, <clears throat> just like many things in our business, by the time that we need some of those fundamentals, we are so far down the rabbit hole of building our businesses that it's very hard to pull back and come back to them. And I was the same way because my sparkly personality is what got me through my first two years of business. But then the problem was, you're exactly right. I couldn't go sit in someone's house for an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. I couldn't sit on the phone for an hour and a half. And the shift from being a new agent or a newer agent that's like, oh my gosh, I got someone on the phone and they like me and we're chit-chatting and this is so great to being like, oh my gosh, I only have three hours in this time block. I have to get off this call. How do I do it? it it's very much like other things in our business where we just, we don't develop those fundamentals and then you're so busy. It's very hard to go back and put them into practice. So if you are a newer agent or you are an agent that's slowing right now and you're looking to rebuild that pipeline, start working on this piece of it because- it's very hard to get it in line when you, you know, have the fruits of all of your labor down the road, trying to, to curb all those fundamentals back in. No. Yeah. And I think the, the biggest thing is like the worst thing to think about what you're going to say is when you're saying it, right? Like, mm -hmm. Jones, exactly mm -hmm. say. and the biggest part of it is that a lot of agents will say, I don't like scripts. I sound canned. Well, that's because you didn't internalize them. You, you sound canned because you didn't figure out how to make it yours and how to pivot the conversation. And, um, you know, Jessica made the comment that this is actually really in your client's benefit. This is what's best for your client because you aren't just having a willy nilly conversation. You're figuring out how to move the needle in that conversation to help them get closer to their goal. So I think this was super helpful. And Jessica, thank you so much for, for doing this for us. Yeah, thank you. I heard somebody the other day say that when somebody says they don't like scripts, it's not that they don't like scripts. They think that their script is better than the script that you've given them. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, that's actually, I, I totally get that kind of, and like what you're saying, you're like, my sparkly personality got me through. And I'm like, yep, my sparkly personality can get me through quite a lot, but it couldn't get me through selling a deal on my own. Well, um, and Jessica, what's I know funny I saw about that is I'm, I don't have the sparkly personality naturally. That's something that I have to like do because I'm not a big people person and scripts help me. I know the five key words that I can say, oh, I'm sounding really mm -hmm. intense, right? Like, let me pull that intensity back. And so I go back to the, imagine this, or what would it look like if, and if then, and mm -hmm. I, I use them as little pieces in my toolbox because they're so internalized that I can throw them into any conversation and get it back on track. So it's, sometimes mm -hmm. it can be for your side of it or my side of it, right? It just helps us all get it right back on track so that we can get to the finish line. Yep, 100%. And, and I want to shout out Dave Neal. I saw that he was on here. Dave Neal was one of the ones that when I was a brand new agent, he listened to me all the time and he would be my script person and we would mastermind and all sorts of things. So Dave, I just wanted to give you a shout out because you heard a lot of the rough scripts at the beginning too. 
<laughs> I was I was literally getting ready to come off mute, and I'm I'm sorry, my camera's not on. I'm still getting ready, but you did a wonderful job. This is awesome. Um, if you're a new agent, or even if you're a seasoned agent, I think this is a great platform. I'm, I'm so excited you're doing this weekly now. Uh, Jessica and I, we started. We joined real estate together prior to coming to uh, EXP. We were script partners. And so, man, just to see your growth and see what you're doing, I'm so happy for you. I'm super excited for you. Um, but I think this is a great platform for us all to come on here and learn. And um, script pre scripting is not my thing either. I used to work in a call center out of college, and I used to just hate getting on the phone. <laughs> so um, a lot of these things kind of just opens you up. It takes you out of your comfort zone. So great job, Jess. This is awesome. And look forward to doing this more with you. Awesome, Thanks, guys. Dave. We will drop Jessica's information in the chat box here. Jessica, if you want to throw your email in there, if anybody ever wants to connect, yeah. always here. Um, we'll make sure that we send out some some links for the next few um, Empowers that are coming up. But just a quick reminder, we are doing it a little differently. Instead of having an in-person conference in July, we are doing a digital conference. It is going to be July 24th. We have got some heavy hitters. We've got Kenny with Kenny Fast Real Estate, uh, Mary Maloney, Tammy Pax. We have got just... Joe Oz, so many great people coming on, and it is going to be from 11 o'clock to 3 o'clock, um, and we are excited to have you there. I'm going to put the link for the Eventbrite um, in the chat real quick, too, so you have that. It's free, but, you know, just so you can keep up with us. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys. We're going to throw this link in there for you right now, and we will go from there. Thanks, ladies. Thank you. We'll email the link out. <laughs> Technology is so hard. We'll email you guys the link. Thanks.